Shegun, it is nice to have you join us on the news. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Hope Ozodima, who is the incumbent governor of Imo State and APC's candidate, was declared the elections a victor despite protests by officials of the opposition party over results from some polling places or units where they claimed voting had not taken place. So what does this indicate about the announcement of um, Hope's legitimacy as the governor of the state? The first thing that I found somewhat curious um, is the speed of the announcement of these results. You know, I mean, we've, we've, we've observed elections in Nigeria for quite a while, um, for a number of election cycles now. Um, I have personally participated in many. And, and I can tell you for free that this is probably the first time, and I say probably because I don't have the specific data, but, you know, this is one of the earliest that I've ever witnessed, where as at 10 a.m. on the day after the elections, results have been announced totally from every local government and every polling unit where elections took place. That I found extremely curious. I'm not saying anything. It's possible. It's not an. It's not. You know. It's not a logistical impossibility. And indeed, one could even argue that this is supposed to be the standard. But um, it hasn't been the standard. And we have seen. I mean, Hogi and Bayelsa are currently ongoing. Bayelsa is significantly smaller than Imo State. They say Bayelsa State has only eight local governments. Um, uh, Imo State, if I'm not mistaken, has 21 um, or thereabouts. Right. Um, so, so how how did it happen so quickly? So it's a question for us to interrogate. Um, there, there were widespread allegations, like some of the ones that you you just played out now, um, about malpractices of various types, pre-written election results, electoral violence, stopping of voting in certain polling units, and all of that. So, so there's a lot to to interrogate about these elections. However, it's important to state that. Um, uh, all of this is, is still in the realm of um, conjecture, as far as I, I know, and there, there really isn't enough evidence at this point to, to categorically determine how significant these malpractices were, how widespread they were, and how, um, uh, whether they had enough of an impact on the outcome of the election. So if 530,000, 540,000 votes from uh, the APC to the nearest contender having 71,000 votes, that margin is um, enormous and it's extremely unusual. Um, uh, the, the APC won in all 21 local governments. You know, I mean, these things are unusual. Mm. So the results appear to, you know, to 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 raise a lot of questions, and uh, I'm absolutely certain, as we can see from the response of um, the other participants in this election, that. There is more to be heard about these elections. It's far from being over. And I'm sure that, as usual with our elections in Nigeria, the judici judiciary is uh, probably the next port of call. Well, uh, Shagun, in contrast to his main rivals, uh, looking at uh, Governor Hopu Zodima, he won, according to INEC, by a fairly wide majority. Uh, but both the election monitors and the journalists, as you have said, decried um, low voter turnout in the state. So, um, of course, you have um, expressed your apprehension or you being stunned at the fact that uh, the uh, results was announced at that early time. So can we now take these numbers as accurate? Uh, over 500,000 um, votes being apportioned to the APC. Well, can we say that these numbers are accurate looking at um, the exercise that happened yesterday? I think another thing that we have to say and that we must point out and that we must keep talking about is the, the, the reports from observers who were on ground that suggest that results have been um, have been uh, recorded in places where there were no elections, in places where, according to INEC, there were no polling units. In fact, you know, so 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 there's a lot of irregularities to to worry about. But having said that, um, it's important to also state that uh, at the moment the election results has been announced by INEC and they have to be taken as being authentic. Mm. Um, the only way to to invalidate this and turn the authenticity uh, around is to go to court. <laughs> so the, the, the famous go to court uh, mantra that we now have in our in our politics uh, would have to come to play here. So um, I 
I wish all the contestants luck. If they have enough evidence as overbearing as the weight of the requirements of uh, proof of uh, irregularities might be, I wish them luck in, 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 their, in their quest for justice if they so feel that um, an injustice has been done to them. So we'll, we'll see how this plays out at, at the judiciary. So, yes. So what about um, these party agents at these polling units? How do you think um, they can channel their complaints at the collation centers without being manhandled, particularly when they appear to have a good cause or reasons uh, to request that the collation be stopped? I think, I think typically I always advise, um, you know, people around me, including my children, you know, um, there, there, are, there are ways of going about um, your grievances, of expressing your grievances, and sometimes you do have to learn to de-escalate situations. Uh, I think that when things are going out of hand, no serious purpose will be served if you get beaten, ruffled up, and potentially even killed um, because you are trying to express your grievances. So I would have thought that uh, the party agent in that situation could have maybe adopted a slightly more measured approach. I'm not saying you shouldn't have protested. If you have a protest to, 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 to tender, then go ahead by all means. Um, we saw in, uh, the, I think it was Kogi State, where one of the parties, I cannot recall which party, I think it was NRM or something like that, had complaints about the outcome that INEP was announcing from their own local government. I mean, look, this thing is, is on air, it's in the public domain. You should have seen the bulk of documents that these guys brought to the collation center. This is not a court. Hmm. They filed a petition right there and then at the collation center saying, look, we have problems with what happened in that place. Elections did not take place in so-so-and-so place. There was violence in so-so-and-so place. And they had a document that they submitted. And the um, uh, returning officer collected those documents with a promise to transmit it to INEC. Remember that the returning officers are not, um, uh, they are ad hoc staff. You know, so that was a good way of expressing, because look, there's nothing you will achieve with this scene that you are uh, showing on your screen right now. Nothing other than just drama. Uh, this drama will not in any way uh, get the points you are trying to make across. The only way to, to make that point is to document it, have your evidence for what has gone wrong, and be ready to go to court. So uh, I expect I that... Uh, but I'm sorry to yes, cut in, but, but then when you look at well, um, okay. the uh, PEPT, that is uh, the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal, um, and of course what happened at the Supreme Court, so evidences were tendered um, of blood results that were used to announce, uh, of course, the presidential election according to the parties that made the allegation. Uh, evidences were tendered. Um, there were witnesses who came up to speak. By the end of the day, um, the, the, the Supreme Court or the judges held sway on their judgment for the person that INEX said won the election. So is it, does it really have to do with the evidences or there are still some um, things that you believe that those who feel aggrieved by results, electoral results, need to do in order to get justice or at least to get a bit of credibility for whatever claims that they are tendering? Look, I think the, the, the first thing that needs to happen is that we need to learn from what this last election cycle because that cycle has now ended at the Supreme Court. So the players in these elections have the benefit of the learning that is available from this cycle, that this recently concluded cycle, including the judgment of the Supreme Court, the judgment of the PPT, and then they support the, the, you know, the agreements by the Supreme Court of that judgment. And one of the things that was strenuously put forward by the, by the court is that the evidence provided by the PDP and by the Labour Party, um, you know, to substantiate their claims of irregularities were simply inadequate. So if I were the parties concerned right now, learning from that, what you should be doing at this very moment, starting from yesterday, in fact, starting from before the elections yesterday, was to begin to document the process strenuously. What do I mean by documentation? Take copies of everything that you have access to during that process. How do you make copies? Use your phone. So every single party agent in, the, in this election should have taken pictures, and then the parties involved should have had a collation process where 
all of that evidence is being put together. Take video, video evidence. If you feel that elections did not take place in certain places, go there, record what is going on there. If you feel there was overvoting in some places, go there, find a way to get the evidence of all of these things that you are claiming. Because mm. at the end of the day, the court will not be able to give you anything that you are unable to prove. Mm. And the burden of proof, unfortunately, by our electoral laws, is very, very high. It's very weighty. So I think that we need to move away from the motive responses and getting you know agitated and violent and all of that to being more calculated and measured in our approach to expressing our grievances. Chairman Shokmito, thank you so much for the robust engagement that you accorded us on the news. We appreciate that. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're